Hello everyone, my name is Grant Howitt. I used to be a video games journalist. I'm not one anymore, but Jake thinks Woo! I'm... <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. uh, but Jake thinks I'm funny, so here we are. Um, I, originally I was hired to write a... Uh, hired? I was hired to write a series of talks on big, stupid games, small, clever mechanics, which is a terrible title for a series of uh, talks. I then, I then started writing plays about video games, which some of you may have seen, and today I tried writing a play, but it wasn't good enough. So instead I'm going to present to you an essay entitled A Brief Synopsis of All of the Assassin's Creed Games Brackets That I Have Played. Because there's so many. They keep releasing them on iOS, and it looks like a PS2 game. Anyway. Oh, shit. Um, do you want me to... Yeah, I'm just going to nod at you when it's time to do the... When it's time. You've got some comic timing, so do watch me. Let me just check quickly that this... Okay, cool. There no, we go. Right. No, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's, no, it's, yeah, but put it forward. Oh, okay. You're so needy. Assassin's Creed 1 is a game made by Ubisoft, or Ubisoft, when they ran out of Persia to put princes in. Instead, they transplanted their tried and tested method of running, jumping, and fighting with swords into the 12th century Holy Land. Assassin's Creed stars, for the want of a better word, Desmond Miles. Desmond Miles is the dullest person ever to exist. Desmond Miles is a spreadsheet made flesh. Desmond Miles' favorite food is flour, and his favorite color is none. He is held against his will by a company called Abstergo, which sounds a lot like a green liquid used to clean tiled floors. They strap him into a mystical tanning bed that teleports his consciousness into the distant past via his DNA in an effort to discover an ancient magical item called the Apple of Eden. Whilst in the history blood magic machine, Desmond Miles becomes Altair, a man who is somehow just as boring as he is. <laughs> Altair's favourite food is waiting and his favourite colour is knives. <laughs> We follow Desmond following Altair's journey of shame and redemption and lots of falling off buildings and drowning in rivers as the ancient assassin kills nine hard to remember targets. <laughs> At one point in this game, you ask a man for information on your target, a man you work with, mind you, and he refuses to tell you the information unless you run around the rooftops and collect 20 or so flags that he has placed there. This reached the final version of the game and it is not a joke. <laughs> Desmond Miles, a person so boring that at his fifth birthday party his own mother didn't recognise him, is still our protagonist despite all attempts to, from both himself and others. We learn that he is now part of an ancient war, joining the side of the free-thinking, liberty-loving assassins who fight against the grumpy, old-fashioned Templars. For some reason, Templars are allowed to wear whatever they want, but assassins have to wear massive white jumpers so they can blend in with the crowd, none of whom are wearing massive white jumpers. <laughs> Anyway, Desmond Miles, a man whose hobby is pausing videos, is recruited by the assassins to fight for them. His training will consist of sitting in a magical chair that catapults him into the past, overseen by Veronica Mars, a woman with a bad haircut, and Danny Wallace, who has been written by taking the comments from Guardian articles and putting them into a blender. <laughs> Whilst in the magic chair, he becomes Ezio Adatori di Firenze, another ancestor of his, this time in 14th century Italy. Ezio's favourite food is kissing, and his favourite colour is whatever colour pretty ladies are. <laughs> Ezio's dad and assorted brothers are killed by the Templars, and his family run out of town and are forced to scrape together a living in a giant mansion with loads of friends. <laughs> He begins a long and honestly hard to remember quest for revenge. The season murder a whole bunch of people. The game ends with him duffing up the Pope. Great! And descending into a magical cavern. Also great! Where he meets a digital ghost from the distant past that speaks directly to Desmond Miles. And therefore the player, which marked the cleverest that the backstory for Assassin's Creed had ever been and would indeed ever be. The meta plot of this game is, a solar flare is coming. That is all. <laughs> Desmond Miles, a character so without anything worthy of comment that you could slap a Game Boy camera image of the player's face over his own and improve him tenfold, is still somehow our hero. The main difference between this game and the previous one is that you get a special meter at the top of your screen and you can use it to summon other assassins who undertake special missions, such as running off in the, one, in the wrong direction, standing motionless on a rooftop, or sprinting headlong into groups of armed men. <laughs> You can also hold down the Summon Assassin button to unleash a ba barrage of arrows into everyone in the surrounding area, killing them instantly, meaning that Ubisoft managed to put a smart bomb in a game that is ostensibly about 14th century Rome. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it should be applaud applauded or commended for this. 
It seems strange that you would make a game where you can push a button to have the computer play, a game, play the game for you, but who am I to question Ubisoft, who by now is snorting hookers off piles of cocaine and driving sports cars out of planes into bespoke infinity pools? We are still looking for the Apple of Eden. At the end of the game, one of those digital ghosts makes Desmond stab Veronica Mars, but we have spent the last 40 hours in Renaissance Italy, and no one really cares. <laughs> Desmond Miles, a man who can't watch paint dry after 4 p.m. or else he has trouble sleeping, is somehow still at the helm in this, the fourth Assassin's Creed game that I've played. He is bundled into a wizard future past chair after slipping into a coma, where he engages in some honest-to-God first-person jumping puzzle sections whilst bombarded with disjointed memories of his father. Scraping at the bottom of the Ezio barrel, Ubisoft bring us handfuls of barrel splinters and fling Ezio, who is now a smouldering grey fox, into the heart of Constantinople, where he meets no end of swarthy types and dabbles in IED manufacture. There is a loot system in this game, because there is a bomb crafting system in this game, because of reasons. The reason being, Ubisoft are tumbling full speed downhill in their pursuit of fat stacks of cash and their uncaring lust for money. And in their uncaring lust for money, they only wondered if they could and not if they should. In a game where you are bristling with concealed pistols, crossbows, throwing knives and swords, it is possible to craft a bomb that spreads lamb's blood over an area, <laughs> causing anyone affected to think they've been injured by the, by the explosion, which gives you time to actually injure them. <laughs> This is now the most Assassin's Creed shit available. Hard to get, impossible to use, and almost entirely without effect. Also, there is a tower defense minigame that is clearly punishing the player for something they did wrong in a previous life. Or perhaps it is a comment on the weariness of being in power, how heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. In the end, you will let Constantinople fall into chaos because the deaths of hundreds of innocents at the hands of your sworn enemies is better than having to stand on a rooftop and tell people where to build barricades again. This entire game is about getting inside a library. At the end of it, Ezio gets inside the library, and the game ends. Okay. Somehow, Desmond Miles is still here. If Beige could walk, it would walk away from Desmond Miles. Whatever, he is barely present. Listen, here is the plot of Assassin's Creed 3 as I played it. Here is Connor, a half English, half Native American boy, and he lives in the woods with his family, but not his dad, who is a Templar. And then bad men burn his village to the ground, so he staggers out into the wilderness and starts killing people because a magic glowing eagle told him to. Then he meets a strange old man who also lives in the woods who mumbles some shite about an ancient order of assassins. And then he sends Connor off to kill people in faraway cities for reasons neither of them can really remember or understand. Connor will gladly kill ten men over a border dispute. Connor's pockets are full of unused beaver fat, taken from a beast he killed ages ago by jumping out of a tree and assassinating it with his hidden blade. Connor's only spare clothes, aside from the assassin jumper that all members of the organization must wear, are filthy rags that he keeps in the basement of the house where he squats, staring at a stone tomahawk affixed to the wall, waiting for the man who lives upstairs to tell him who to kill next. Later, when Connor runs out of people to murder, he tries to join the Templars. This is a very strange game. Desmond Miles is dead! <laughs> Sing it from the rooftops. The man who was so boring he couldn't open an autom automatic door without assistance is dead. He died in a cave. Something to do with digital ghosts. Anyway, you're now a history diver working for Abstergo Entertainment, which is just Ubisoft, but slightly more friendly and welcoming to outsiders. <laughs> and you're exploring the path through a magical computer plugged into bits of Desmond Miles in order to make a film about pirates. You don't get a name a personality, or really any agency, but you still manage to be way more interesting than Desmond Miles in the same way that, say, a window is more interesting than a wall. More importantly, more importantly now, you are Edward Kenway, dashing Welsh pirate, and you get to play about with the best part of Assassin's Creed 3, honking great boats on the ocean, which just so happened to be filled full of every pirate ever. In this game, you play a Templar who uses all the same weapons as an assassin, except for one which they've yet to bring to battle. An Irish accent so atrocious it counts as a breach of the Geneva Convention. <laughs> I can't remember a fucking thing about this game, and Steam says I've played it for 30 hours. I think at one point I shot a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Poor blimey apples and governor, it's London town. Up the hay when you round your father's, roll out the old dog and chain, etc, etc. 
When you play Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you're playing a computer game. And in that computer game, you're also playing a computer game, which is identical to the computer game Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Got that? You control an assassin initiate who controls Jacob and or Evie Fry, a right pair of chances who wear top hats and hit people with sticks. Set in London at the tail end of the Industrial Revolution, Syndicate takes the puzzle-themed free-running that was the mark of its previous games and replaces it entirely with a grappling hook mounted to each character's hand, meaning that you can go up as far as you like as quick as you like. And it all feels like when you first leave home and live on your own, and you're in the shops and you see a whole tub of ice cream and you think, no one can stop me from eating a whole tub of ice cream now. So you buy it and take it home and eat it in one sitting and you feel tremendously sick and you're like, this is why they tried to stop me. This is horrible. <laughs> Is this what the series has become? No climbing and carriages to replace lateral traversal and daft upgrade trees and the same bloody combat over and over, sitting, holding block, waiting for an enemy to mess up so you can push the kill person button and move on to the next part of the game. Nothing but a dirty map of London covered in missions you don't care about and don't really want to do anyway, but you do them in order to clean up the map. And you're old and your hair is graying and your knee hurts. You just want it to be 2008 again. Would that be so bad? Would that ruin everything to have another shot, to live it all again and do it louder, brighter, better, more vibrant? Anyway, at one point you get to carry a dog in a bag which invalidates everything I just said and made me laugh like a child, 10 out of 10. <laughs>